So, hello everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's Alexander Craig Yoling, the, known as the Craig here with me. <laughs> See for me, Johnny. It's been a long time since I've been on the video. Um, I got kind of lucky with Alex reaching out to me, wanting to do this video. So that was really kind of him to take the time to to do this with me. How's it going, Alex? Thanks so much. Yeah, it was just this impulse to, yeah, to let you shine again. Yeah, thank <laughs> I you. Felt like, hey, you have done so much on the YouTube community. You had created so much for us who really want to learn all the spiritual abilities. And yeah, just thought, hey, you haven't posted anything for the last 10 months. And I think <laughs> some content needs to get out. And yeah. so for me, it was like, oh, we we met actually the first time on, on camera with Ken when he was interviewing me and said, hey, we should talk. I don't know why, but we need to talk. And now yeah. we already started talking some stuff before from the Enneagram and uh, like uh, the human design, not the Enneagram. And yeah, I always thought like he must be a projector. He must be like me because the projector and the human design is a visionary person. And for them, it's like very important that they get invited because they're not like a MG, like a manifesto generator, a generator or a reflector who have different structures, how they work. So we are really like, we have done our work and then let's see who is ready. And then we need to get invited. And if we get invited, we go there, we teach. But the rest of the time, we are just like, I would say in the space of not knowing, I would say. So I'm just like, mm, do you have a patience, drive? waiting. Just patience. Yeah. You got it. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> it's sometimes very bitter, like when you finally have some students and then you get disappointed that they don't do the work, what they say that they did. And sure, I care about the students like that. Yeah, I want to I check on them, make sure they're working and on themselves. But you know, it's sometimes people life they get busy or maybe their interests are temporary here, there. Yeah. And yeah, stuff. I think that's also with the project or with me, like I was interested in so many things and then everything disappeared, but it was more a form of emptiness and enlightenment states where there was no need to talk, no need to do anything. And then also the energy of your body decays. For me, it really felt like, oh, my body got weak. I yeah. don't need to the body anymore because Forrester was a strong body person. And... And then it was like, okay, nothing has a meaning till you give it the meaning. So everything is totally useless here in life. And not getting fully depression out from this, just like understanding everything is how it is. And so your drive becomes different. Mm -hmm. It's not like first it was your ego who say, oh, I need to achieve this yeah. and that. And then you still do things, but without any wanting, it's just like mm -hmm. enjoying how it is. And so the quality becomes different. And it does. It does. I mean, in in some ways, that that the, if you know what you're doing with that kind of thing, the the quality can actually be improved of what you're doing because there's not so much ego or uh, or um, desire behind what you're doing. So you have room to. I know this sounds funny. Like creativity and logic go together, though. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it, it's funny when you do get more of into a state of of getting more in touch with energy instead of the physical side, you know, you learn some things. So when you go back to the physical side, it's, I don't want to say like, you're more of like a Android or robot, like data or Spock, like we could like, and you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we still have a lot of feeling and passion within us, but, you know, I think it's that the, the observer mode changed. Yeah. First is the identification so strongly with your feeling up here and your body and everything, what you believe, what you experience. And then for me, it's more like you're going back, back, back. And the all the energy. Server. And then you, while you are, let's say, in a beach volleyball game, it's like, who is playing right now? What emotion is coming up? Why I'm talking like that? And why I'm screaming? Because I know it's not me. It's just like I, I'm connected to the field and this guy needs a scream now or whatever. Yeah, sure. But I saw him dancing when I was in Mexico. 
first for me to dance, especially salsa, was to get this fire out and getting crazy, having fun. And then I was one time dancing and just observed the woman and allowed her to shine. So it wasn't about me. It wasn't about the music. It was just like observing how can I lead the woman in this dance that she feels comfortable. It was also totally different from before because first we are so used that everything is just about us all the time, our feeling, our thoughts and emotions. And I think how more you go into these different states, then yeah. The, the next thing happens is more, maybe that you get attachment about the states and this also starts to disappear. That's also yeah. Important. Yeah, it's really and, interesting you bring that up. You know, because uh, in everyday life, um, the average person, you know, is thinking about themselves more than they're necessarily thinking about the other person. I don't know. Which is totally natural, normal. Everyone's doing it all the time. But, you know, I know this sounds a little bit like, I want to use it as an example, but, you know, a lot of people, like, let's say a couple are together and they're making love, you know, maybe one person's paying attention to himself or the other one is only paying attention to himself. But it's a lot more interesting when you're paying attention to each other, you know, mm -hmm. and that's happening. And that's very, like, you know, different experience that I think a lot of people don't get to understand, experience like how they're going through even the small things in life all the way to something is very intimate with another person, you know, our interactions with people. This is either we're like all day far away from everybody or we can, we can get very close to people if we know how to, you know. I think it's a big um, problem nowadays to really get in contact with people, like for real, to really have a deeper relationship. And even for me, because I was traveling for over 11, 12 years, I saw that I was like constantly seeding, having some sprouts everywhere because I have connection all over the world. But then it's like, in the beginning, I was strongly this connector. I told, oh, go there, do this. And I was connecting all the people together. But then it was like, hey, what I'm doing with my time? Because actually I'm like a walking agency because I know <laughs> get some profit out from it. But for me, it was never about this. And then it was like, okay, but how can you get all the fruits from your work when you're constantly just seeding more and more and more and more, but yeah. you don't have time to water and look at it. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm planting everywhere, but then I'm, I'm not going there to check or do anything because it's just too much what I've done. Yeah. And it was like the last four years. Oh, where do I want to root down? Where is my community? Where do I want to live? And I think that's the, the harder part instead of just traveling the, the world all the time. And people believe sometimes, oh, traveling is so nice and it's such a cool lifestyle, but they have no idea that you constantly change the time, the food. So, the food, yeah. It's like after one and a half year traveling without stop, for me, I came back to Austria one time and I was like, <laughs> I couldn't recover, I felt like a bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> We have to do some self-hypnosis and other help from other healing practitioners just to come down. And down. I just ask, I think one year ago, I asked myself how much from all these trips and crazy experience I have had, have I actually fully integrated? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> no. And that's the thing, like we are constantly so overloaded. And that's why I've done many times Vipassana or dark retreats just to observe but what is still like saved in my body as I experience what is actually not good to be there, what creates too much tension out from fear, not knowing where to sleep or some other traumatic experience, what, what you're not aware of anymore because you don't think consciously. About it. Yeah, consciously. That's why for me always this yeah, time, like I just did like 16 days in darkness and I had so much healing yeah. yeah it was totally different than all the others i have done already seven times it was the longest i wanted to do for three weeks yeah did you start did you start seeing anything after like a week or two <laughs> like 10 days uh -huh. or so did you start seeing any like me ordinary um after three four days i see my soul light uh, and then having like a lamp in the front, month, front. yeah this time it was not so strong 
because I was not so much in silence because Sarah was taking care of me and I was doing a lot of healing for her and so a lot of transmission and that's why I did also two online transmissions one on Christmas and one on New Year and Max was hosting it and many feedbacks from his TikTok for her so it was quite profound what people that's cool. yeah I just uploaded it on YouTube and yeah it's nice to see like when people are ready to connect with a certain field then how fast things can change that's, that's true and that's for for us projectors when we are the field so just try and look and come. The field, <laughs> just like offering the field and it's everything already scientifically proven for a long time i was like when you see from joe dispenser what he is doing or greg braden bruce yeah. Lipton. And Bruce Lipton just has been in Austria and I just met him like two or three months ago. It was kind of fun. I said, hey, hello, Bruce. Nice to see you again after eight years because I met him in New Zealand. And it was so funny because he asked me, hey, Alex, do you want to know something? We can meet uh, tomorrow at one. I said, yeah, yeah. And we meet at the bench and then he comes, yeah, what do you want to know? And I said, nothing. And he looked at me like this <laughs> said, uh, so so what is that look everything what you teach i live already for five years and this was more than eight years ago and so now come and i gave him a quantum healing session <laughs> and it was like Ooh, changing his mind because when you are a teacher you're constantly giving 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 yeah and you totally forget also to receive yeah this is something where i was also looking oh where where are we so used to give uh, and forgot to receive that's a good question. I, I'd never expect anything from anyone. <laughs> you know, I, I just try to give. You know, as a, as a teacher. It's, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like when you are in this helper mode or serving mode, then you are also like a, let's say a little bit minimalist. You don't care. Everything is how it is. But at the same time, then it's like, okay, how much are you ready to be a big creator? How much are you ready to influence on a bigger scale? Because when you look at, let's say, at the market like 90% are steam talkers in coaching and whatever. And for me in the beginning, I said, hey, I never want to become famous. I don't want to be with the steam talkers and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and even like when I watched like even having a lifestyle like Bruce Lipton, who is like, or Greg Braden, Jody Spencer, who is like every two weeks traveling somewhere, giving seminars. Seminars, yeah. It's also like draining your energy. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. to have influence but at the same time okay how can you balance this to be that famous that you say okay people come to my place because i created like like mantec gi yeah and yeah. everyone goes to him <laughs> so, so why should I do this time and energy if you want to come over or you come to the online academy and that was for me something okay we we are here to to get into a new way because how can you talk about longevity and immortality and then you don't have time for training because you're constantly teaching and that's the thing like even in teaching you go and share especially as a projector we don't have so much energy like a generator so, but yeah. we are perfect to take all the energy what is in the room let's say from 100 people and make it even bigger better yeah that's our gift as yeah as well. that's that works yeah i you know, we can sense the field of everyone. We can direct the energy. We can race the frequency of it. But they have lots of power within them. They don't. They're not even aware of. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny. It's like, yeah, it doesn't feel like I have that much power, but I have this much control over all that. Thing. <laughs> like we are like the empty vessel who can lead the energy, and the other one are the generators who have the energy and don't know where to put it. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> it's funny. It's like okay, all the energy what you have, let's go through the heart channel. Let's open there. Let's open the pineal gland. Boom. <laughs> It's make an amazing space in yeah. the body for some hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fun. We have we have like um at the local university, you know, we do the qigong and tai chi classes and, and yoga and pranayama breath work and meditation. And um it's it's amazing how it makes a difference. Like um so like Reza is a good coach and telling people to do this and do that with the moves, right? But it's a big difference if I'm there where the people really start feeling energy a lot. Like, you know, it's a, you can, we have 
people like you know in a way when we we're in front of someone they if they never felt energy we can let them feel energy for the first time in their life you know just like this you know and then they'll never forget that feeling and they'll know what they're looking for when they go home and practice now they're like what, what was i feeling and then they that's how like they'll they'll get it very quick because a teacher you know like us can really help them and because if you're reading in books or you got a teacher just going like this and this and with movements you could spend your whole life and never feel the energy you know that's what i saw even for people who practicing like chan trang for 30 years and still don't understand what they are doing and then you can teach it in a weekend seminar and they are much further developed than anyone who is training for 30 40 years because they don't get the right teachings and that's yeah. why i started to do actually the seminars because first i never thought about teaching anything i was not in this at all. it was for me interesting to know all this stuff but never thought of giving out it like that way but then i saw oh this is easy this is so easy this is even easier okay let's bring stuff together how can you learn much more efficient doesn't matter if it's a language or any other ability and yeah and then it's just so nice to see it was for me later not just the ability how can you use a certain technique like in tai chi to change your fear or your program and mm. it's just something with sarah like i attack her with her energy like what she is afraid of and she has to go into full acceptance and see what will go on then. and ah. then it's like went into different energies and intentions like Oh, I'm like an ex-boyfriend or whatever, and then see how is your body reacting to this kind of energy. Ooh. And you, and you fully accept it. And if you're in your Tai Chi mode, you just can take it and you can release it. And yeah. even some tears was co were coming up today. Mm. And that's for me like so I started to develop all these techniques into a more how to say this? More so mastery. Like a method, you really can use it. Otherwise, yeah. you just buy cheap. But for what? <laughs> and it's yeah. like yeah. if you just do telekinesis, then for what? So for me, yeah. it was like asking people, yeah, when you achieve this, what are you doing with it? Because yeah. I don't need to use my mind to to move uh, a paper. Object. Yeah, right? no. That's why I have the hand. But it's, a good <laughs> it's easier with the hands. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's like, I should have waste so much yin energy. energy. For, yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, energy. I, I personally agree. You know, as as a teacher who I teach these things, it's because I just want the information to be out there, you know, for people. But at the same time, I'm always encouraging them. This is not the purpose, you know, to, to go move. That. The purpose is the self mastery, where you get the emotional control, the mental control, you know, the body control. Self healing is also really important. Taking care of yourself. You want a longevity and good health comes from this kind of. That's the thing, but I said, okay, if you know that you can influence things with your mind, then how can you still be a victim? Because you can in influence every organ. So why you still make a victim in this, but then you believe you have superpowers. So this is not yeah. magic. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And this is, was the same thing where I said, like in sports, if you can do one thing very good and you fully trust, like maybe you're a runner or whatever, take this trust and use it then for doing taxes or whatever what do you have a uh, like a conflict with or relationship so hey if i trust that money if i trust that i can run uh, in 11 seconds 100 meters because i trust my body so then i also can trust my body to heal itself but where is this trust so where is this mistrust coming from oh it's collective field so for me it was later it is. <laughs> if I have one thing but i but i'm really good then I can put it into every other thing. Yeah. And because I came also from quantum healing, I saw like this energy masters, this IQ masters, and doing this, and people are falling 20 meters. And then I was like, oh, how is he going into this state? Because nobody will tell you the techniques, no one. <laughs> For me, I had to figure it out by myself and that maybe one good teacher who told me a little bit and then was constantly by training with my training partner and being playful that so, ah, this is how it goes. Ah, this is how it goes. Ah, it's so yeah. yeah. Nobody will tell you. Yeah, because... no one no one tells you. No one will tell you that. Even a lot of people don't know how to do who are really developed. I had a practice with Reza for it took me about three three to I say that three years, you know, felt like five before I got good, but three years before like practicing with Reza doing like Tai Chi, 
but then like going from Tai Chi touch to no touch, it took it took time because I'd be like, ah, ah, you know, even though I could feel like chi I feel, I'm like, is that even strong enough? Oh, that you just go right through that. It doesn't matter. It became later when I started knowing how to really both of us at the same time, you know, not just like Tai Chi or like, you know, it, it started making a difference with the intention and and a lot of things. I mean, when, the more you practice, that's it. Just practice, the better you get, you know. That's the thing. And I think how older we get, how more practice we need. That's yeah. the same. And it depends <laughs> also like uh, uh, on the age, because I saw it mostly we are in the search till we are getting 40. And damn, I'm getting in 10 days, 30. What? I forgot. Nine, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone so I forget sometimes how old I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday exactly? Uh, 25th of January. 25th of January. Oh, cool. That is close. And and then I had this, oh, something is missing. First, you always have this inner drive to collect something, to do something. And then la next year, it's mostly just to gather and that you have, yeah, you have done your work the last 30 years. So now you go into a different lifespan. So after 40, it's more like, okay, between 40 and 50, it's more like a suction. You're not on this, oh, I have to run, I have to do something. Your energy is changing in this time. It's and changed a lot for me since so I'm 42 right now, right? Going to turn 43 soon. But at 38, I was doing so much more than I'm doing now at 42. You know, I, I, I think back, like, I had so much energy. Like, Reza just turned 39. And I was like, man, you're still lucky, you know? And I was like, yeah, hey. <laughs> you're still lucky. You still have to yeah. drive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Waiting till death, not to be <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's funny. But yeah, you're right. And there is a difference. And so, you know, at my age, I actually do have to train, practice more, you know, train harder than I did, you know, like this, years ago. Um, this area of, oh, we need a lot of techniques, we want a lot of information, blah, 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 blah. We collected everything, but this then later comes this time where you don't need more information. You had collected the last 30 years, all the information. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, practice, 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 standing, doing Tai Chi, doing Qigong, meditating, having fun, just enjoying life and being more yeah. in the state of um enjoying everything with this you have no oh i need to hustle i need to experience so this inner fire of constantly having something new totally starts to disappear it's it's a yeah it's a little bit different for me because there's things that i i do that i'm good at it and i i like doing them and i also enjoy giving value to people but but I, I, at this point, I go at my own pace, you know, and it's, it's like okay, like kind of over time. Like if people want to come now, you know, I'm here. We can do something. I'd be happy to. <laughs> yeah. But before, I'd be like, I gotta go do this. Gotta go do this. <laughs> it's funny. So interesting because, like, your impulse is changing. First, everything your intuition tells you, oh, I have to go there. Oh, this would be interesting. Oh, this, and now it's like everything is neutral everything is the same you're actually waiting oh hopefully i get some input somewhere yeah. it's like like lost in nothingness because nothing yeah. is anymore. yeah it does feel like being nobody going nowhere at some point yeah. you know and uh <laughs> yeah and um there's a uh, one takeaway though i i can i can say is that um The, the quality of the energy when it changes that way, you're also not necessarily expecting as much from the world and, mm. you know, or people in general, you know. Um, I, I, there's, no huh? <laughs> huh? there's no disappointment. Like <laughs> Before, I'm like, oh, that sucks. I was really looking forward to doing that, you know, but now I'm like, I understand. That's fine, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Maturity, huh? I don't know if that's true. The saying that the older you get, the wiser you get. I I don't think that saying is actually true, but I do think. <laughs> I think we do change though physically and um, energetically. You know. 
plus i can you can see it also like people with age are not going into the ripeness process but it's normal that it comes from inside like um for me a different kind of mentoring helped me a lot to get more riper to not run away constantly from some places to another to really say okay i, I face everything so uh, there's no time to run away and first when you are in this freedom mode it's like you do whatever you want it's just like who, who can stop me and i think this becomes different than the, uh, in the ripeness and that's the thing like i i compare it like a tree like when we're young we have so many leaves we have so many interests we grow grow mm -hmm. grow and then yeah. the writing process, it's more like that the bark, the trunk is getting wide. Up there is nothing changing so much. Yeah. It feels like when you used to constantly collect, do more and more and more, <laughs> but when you're now just like, um, how to say, like getting wider, you feel like I'm stopped because first your energy was all the time more sprites, really? more yeah. flowers, more leaves. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, this stays the same. You've collected everything. Now it's about getting more and more stable and wider and rooting bigger. Yeah. And it feels so uncomfortable. So the ripening process is so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a very good analogy. Very, very, very good way to give a visual uh, description of that. That that is true. I agree with you. It because you feel like stop because first your hype was every time oh i found out something new oh i know how this is working oh i know mm -hmm. how this is <laughs> it's exciting so, to learn <laughs> yeah so you're so excited to learn 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 and there was one question in one mentoring class like for what do you burn <laughs> what a stupid question why should i limit myself by saying for what do i burn was like my first thought because and then like 10 people were saying for what they burn. And then it was like, fuck, I burn for, what was it? Like the impossible and the unknown. Mm. And shit, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurting myself all the time because when I make the unknown known and the impossible possible, my fire is away. Yeah. Because actually my fire should be here if I clean the, the floor. Oh, or yeah, With the floor. you. Because it's just my inner fire. Why should I limit it to some certain thing? But when I asked in the subconscious, this was coming up and it's like, fuck. Yeah. So all the time, when I know a new trick about levitation, telekinesis or whatever was coming up at that time, was like, oh, I don't need to train because I know it now. Yeah. Because immediately in my mind, no, oh, this is how it works. Yeah. I was like, fuck. So it was quite interesting. Okay, how can I change it that a burning desire is just about exploring two things and then like killing myself with it. It's just like burning for every situation, eating, sleeping, or whatever you do. Yeah. It was many years ago I got this. I was like, wow. That's that was interesting. A good, that was that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good story. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's so funny. I would have never, never even heard that question until you said that. For what do you burn? Mm. Uh, I think it's the right translation it's just like from German because we yeah. say sometimes we burn for the desire what is your yeah. desire? desire what is your desire yeah. yeah so I've never had a desire that I can say other than women <laughs> <laughs> now we've got an interesting talk <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean I never cared for fame or fortune you know um, just care for women yeah <laughs> We have to release this program of woman care. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's, it's okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm mature, you know. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's always... It's a big world out there. Anytime I feel like going outside to meet somebody, you know, it's not a hard thing to do. But uh, I'm also, at this point, since I'm a little bit older, I like more time also by myself. But, I mean, I, I still like them, but, you know... <laughs> Just a little older, rather work work on myself. It's a long time of overstimulating our senses with different kind of information. It's like then you just want to be alone. It's like nothing can hype you so much. It's like Yeah, you know, I had my my I had like so many hats, different hats I was playing. Uh, I was like like you were saying earlier, planting seeds everywhere. I was like so many, you know, plates on my yeah. um so it's like, like having a, a running buffet all the time 
I just eat rice. I don't eat yeah. salsa. Babe. Yeah. Eat rice. Give me rice. Okay. Yeah, I've li I've limited everything to like basically two things instead of like you know I had a dozen <laughs> things. I had twelve different things out there. Now I just focus on two. You know. So. Yeah, it was one time a Qigong master told me like Alex, you are like um, how to say this um, a bag full of different flowers. Just focus <laughs> on. I said, yeah, but I'm a macrocosmic person, and I know in Asia they're more microcosmic. They're just like doing one thousand times one thing, and then <laughs> the essence. For me, it's like I do it three times that I remember there are more than other things, but are all connected to the same thing. And for me, I connected all the big dots together to mm -hmm. to explain now that you, if you find the essence in one thing, you can find it in everything. In everything. That's true. And I agree I with you. Explain it in so many different ways that the person is understanding it, just like having a fixed point of view, like, oh, how do you, <laughs> yeah. how do you understand it? So no. Yeah, because a lot of people are like the horses. With the, <laughs> yeah. And they put that on the horses so the horses don't get scared and run in <laughs> different directions. And both it's important to have. And it's just like, okay, that's how my system is working. And then I had to say, oh, after like... When everything disappears, then it was like, okay, what do I still want to do? That's so hard because there is no one thing. And I constantly yeah. have to ask every day, so body, what do you want to experience? What do you need? What kind of love do you want to have? What do you want to experience? What is a good training for you right now? Mm -hmm. Because when there is no desire and then it's really hard to get back a discipline. Like I really had to say, okay, how can I discipline myself again? First for yeah. the being very disciplined, then going the other way. Uh, the other way, yeah. Now to find this middle way from this extreme, what I've lived. And I think this is much harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's really not, true. Many people are, are stuck in this position. Even people who are doing a lot of meditation, Vipassana, and later are totally lost in their life. They don't know what to do anymore after yeah. when you go to the first stage of awakening where everything becomes senseless and people believe, oh, it's enlightenment. So no, you just lose some identification. You're not even on maybe just a look 700 and then you go, go and go further because there's so much more to explore. Uh, that's very true. That does happen to a lot of people. I mean, even even like we were saying a second ago, I mean, I okay, so now I'm like, I sit behind a chair, desk more, you know, and, and then it's like, okay, I'm at, at this age, what am, what am I doing? What's going on, right, with my life? Um, looks like it froze, but uh, let me wait for Alex to come back. Okay. Oh, there you are. I hear your voice. You still there? Oh, the video looks like it's paused. Hello? Hi, no. there you are. Okay. Yeah, it was, I think my internet was just changing into another field. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. But yeah, I mean, that's that's very true. If Especially if the one's not there, then you don't know what you're looking at. But then you got to kind of then come up with like what's maybe the right thing to do you know and which is the discipline get back into discipline you know and take care of myself i, I you know every day i sit i get like this week or no still got to get up and go do some exercise and stuff like that so okay yeah. that's obvious like eating food and sleeping okay then what do you want well i don't know well let me go see what other people want from me oh you're a talented musician why don't you keep making music okay I'll make music that's what that, that's a problem like when you are in the state and also projected then you constantly need like invitation from outside <laughs> and it's like oh my god do i really need the invitation why can't i do it just inside it. Uh -huh. yeah yeah well you know i was younger more passionate i would go from inside you know and try to put myself out there to in front yeah. of everybody but Not but, anymore. <laughs> but but now but now you know it's just like I won't even do it for myself even if I'm good at it unless they tell me that they like it and that it's good and I should do it, you know? I'm like, really? That matters to people? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, also like me like that you you don't give compliments that much because for me, it's like, why should I give you a compliment? It's like, for <laughs> me, it's like, you are amazing. You should know it. It's like, for me, it's even like just when I tell Sarah, oh, sorry that I don't give you a compliment because it's so normal. You should know that you are already an amazing being. And for me saying it, it's more like, oh, I have to tell you, remind you. It's like, for me, it's against intelligence to do it because then it, it's something like, I need to say it for what? Who needs to, <laughs> Who yeah. needs to remember? And there's like, really like, 
we were we all are amazing so i don't need mm -hmm. this acceptance from outside from anything yeah 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 be really but... simple. it's more like if i give you like a gift uh, a sentence a teaching or whatever it is and then you start to transform and you use it in your life that's the biggest gift for me it's like oh thank you that you just do yeah just yeah do and i don't need a thank you i don't need the gift it's more about how can we share like the easiness, the wisdom in everyday life. Because mm -hmm. if you do it as a practice, then you're just a practitioner. You're not a cultivator. You're not, you don't live spirituality. You're esoteric. I'm yeah. sitting here a little bit meditating. Oh, <laughs> but then outside in life, you immediately yeah. feel triggered. That's why yeah. I think we teach self-mastery then much more because it was much more important to be yeah good human being and just having a person with some abilities because then you're still just an asshole with abilities if you yeah want. yeah that's no good we don't want that and you know and that yeah that's why we always I mean, yeah. yeah i've always stressed like since day one that when you know people are coming to do this kind of stuff uh, you know that's usually the wrong attitude that what they're coming with. They need to first check their attitude. Why? They still need to realize if they want good quality uh, energy to grow, they have to be a good person. You yeah. Know? They have to be a good person. And I think the main reason why people are looking for power is it's mostly like, I want to be something special. Oh, I want to show my friends. Uh, you are not um, teasing me anymore because now I'm stronger than you. And so it's all about this lack behavior. Mm hmm it's competition I have to be more important than you because look who i am the same doesn't matter if it's money or if it's any other hour or football or sports you know you know that's it's, it's people yeah. want that's the that, uh, com, 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 competition very competitive nature so i saw that the competition from your normal life from sports went then into spirituality oh how can i be faster than this and as a sports scientist, <laughs> for the effectiveness. So I was always looking for this, but it was also like very in the back of the subconscious. It was not my normal intention to be now better than. For me, it was always just like, what is the most effective way to learn something, and mm -hmm. how can I give it then to the people? Because for me, it was always later, everyone should know it. It's just some basic. For me, I felt like the alien. When I came back to, to Austria, like when I traveled so much, I had so much information. And then you go back to your country and everything stays the same. People yeah. stay the same. It stays the same. It was like, hmm. changed so much like every week for me. I'm the walking change. And then you go back and everything is the same. People yeah. talking about the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been away for two years maybe. And then it's like, nothing has changed. Changed <laughs> at all. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's funny to think about it. Yeah. yeah, and I think that that's maybe our problem to say like we want that people develop faster than they believe themselves, and then it's like oh, I'm projecting your future self that already enlightened, already with superpower, and everything to make a greater planet. But many people are afraid of the power. Many people have the wrong intention for the power, and and it's like the bitterness was comes in the projectors like. My way of finding the people who just can play with. Just like uh, doing crazy stuff, having fun, teleporting, levitation, whatever. But not out from, oh, I have to be something I am already. Yeah. It's just I'm enjoying my presence. And I don't even need to do. I can't, but I don't need to. I can sit yeah. here and say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can scream and get crazy. There is yeah. no difference anymore. I have no picture who I need to express. And there is no, oh, I have to be the big guru. I have to talk. I have to look what I'm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the pure state what you are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You were absolutely correct there, Alex. I mean, it's funny that you got me. I wasn't expecting to do a video or put up anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You got me good, man. <laughs> this has been a really fun talk so far. Um. Yeah, so are we we're gonna plan we're gonna plan on doing some more talks, right? Yeah, let's do something. Like, and uh, maybe your community, what would be what would be your next step in life? What is your bigger goal for the next five years? Yeah, the community. Yeah, uh, tell us. Support is missing. I think there are many things, but it's like okay, let's do a life, and then let's do a question answer life stuff. And see 
Yeah. No, that, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll see how many how many people get a chance to check out this video once we put it up, and then and then we'll definitely try to make more videos and definitely go live with the question and answers. I think that'd be really cool. And well, thank you, Alex, for getting me back involved. Yes, and, and I and I look forward to actually getting involved with everybody again. Yeah. Man, this is cool. Thank you, man. Amazing. So have a wonderful evening. And likewise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take care, brother. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, see you. See you. Bye.